Well, the days of our 2022 challenge are coming to an end, and I just wanted to share a couple of good reports and then talk about the dawn phenomenon and what may be holding you back. And there is some good news for you, those of you that struggle with the dawn phenomenon. Also, <laughs> you can see that in the fasting phenomenon. When you go a few hours without eating, sometimes instead of your blood sugar going down, it goes up and you're thinking, what in the world's going on? Anyway, let's get to the first testimony. This was sent by email. This individual from uh, Arizona says this, I'm sending thanks for your information and help during the 2022 challenge. Last January, I was tested in my doctor's office with, with an A1C of 9.7. And he says it was a big surprise to me. Well, so often that is the case. He says three months later, I tested at 7.1. I'd lost 10 pounds 10 weeks into the 2022 challenge. Three additional months later and still participating in the 2022 challenge, I have joined the Fives Club. Hallelujah. That is always good news. When you cross that border, that boundary, and now you're in the Fives Club. My A1C was tested at 5.9 in the second week of July, six months from the doctor's initial visit. I've lost over 20 pounds of weight from January, and my blood work is now in the normal range. I've discontinued the statin medication prescribed in January. I no longer take any meds at age 66. You know you're doing pretty well when you're in your mid-60s and you're taking no meds at all, particularly when you used to have to take them. Part of my effort besides diet was to walk four miles a day, and that sure can't hurt and uh, could do a, a great deal of good uh, for casual morning exercise. Well, four miles a day... <laughs> Well, I wouldn't call it casual, although he probably wasn't walking too vigorously. Maybe that's why he says casual. Your program definitely worked for me. I thank you for the good health result. Well, uh, thank God the program is working for so many people. And uh, then here's another one who had a tremendous testimony, but it, it also bears uh, an important amount of weight concerning the dawn phenomenon. And that's what I wanted to encourage some of you with today. This person says, following your advice, I reversed my condition. I feel so well. My morning blood glucose is 100 now. I used to have the dawn phenomenon and it was very depressing, even after fasts, to wake up too high with a really high, with a high number. So, used to have the dawn phenomenon. Now, we probably all still have a trace of it or some of it, but not like this person did. And they end uh, with the words, you have a very inspiring channel. This was a comment left under one of my videos. And someone asked them, well, what was your dawn phenomenon? And they said from the 160s to 190s. So in other words, my glucose wasn't all that bad in the daytime. But boy, when I woke up in the morning or if I went and did much fasting, it would start to rise. And before I knew it, I'd be in the 160s, 170s, 180s or so forth. So uh, not good. But suddenly something broke. Uh, I like the word breakthrough. That's a powerful word. And we all love to get breakthroughs when we're struggling with some kind of an issue and how much more so with glucose than so many other issues. So I've got a little uh, whiteboard. I wanted to share something with you to kind of explain what may be going on. I can't declare with any particular individual what's happening with them, but what may be going on with some. So what I want us to do is to think for a minute about the... Uh, the way blood sugar can can just suddenly take off. A1Cs I'm thinking of particularly. A lot of times people will go through their 20s, 30s, and 40s and experience just a slight increase. Maybe when you were 25, you had an A1C of 4.9, and now you're 35 and it's up to 5.4, and now you're 45 and it's 5.9, and suddenly at the age of 52, you're at 9.5 or 10.6 or 12.1. You, you've jumped way up in just a short time. A lot of times over the course of a single year or a year and a half or two years, you can go from pre-diabetic to extremely diabetic. And what happens is something that looks like this. You've been just slightly rising over the course of decades and then suddenly you hit a wall 
and up you go. Now, there's a word for this, kind of a graph, and it's called the exponential curve. The exponential curve. And it, that's a terrible thing to have. And you say to the doctor, Doc, I was just here a year and a half ago, and my A1C was pre-diabetic, and now you're telling me I'm severely diabetic? What is going on? Well, I guess it's very difficult to point out exactly, but somehow there is this place where it's like your metabolic system just breaks down. It was struggling, it was huffing, it was puffing, it was doing its best to try to keep up with all the carbohydrates and the insulin surges and the, the glucose it was wanting to rise. And it was gamely fighting hard to keep things under control. And finally, it just breaks down. It can't fight anymore. So what does that have to do with the dawn phenomenon? Well, the dawn phenomenon is sort of the reverse of what I just described. The dawn phenomenon is where you have high glucose, particularly in the mornings and particularly uh, when you're fasting more than maybe five or six hours. And uh, you, you're, you're, your high numbers just don't seem to want to go down. And maybe you're doing low carb, maybe you're doing keto, and your overall numbers are doing better, and your A1C is doing better. Your fasting glucose, uh, however, is not. And you've got that dawn phenomenon. So it's consistently way too high. This lady was saying it was anywhere between 160 and 190 when I would wake up. Just too high. Fasting glucose too high. She said, suddenly, there was a breakthrough. In other words, <laughs> it wouldn't go down too far, but she says, now it's, it, I wake up and it's around 100. I fast for some hours and uh, it doesn't go up. It's not crazy anymore. It's like the reverse of the exponential curve that leads upward where you become diabetic. Now, what is happening here? Well, I can't speak for that particular lady, but I can say that I believe it's often connected with the liver, a liver that is filled with fat, the non-alcoholic fatty liver disease that's doing its best to dump its fat and dump the sugar that's contained, that that fat has been converted from, and it's just releasing it, and your body is fighting it and and uh, so whenever your body has a chance and there's not much going on, like you're sleeping or you're fasting, the, that liver is releasing junk, releasing fat, releasing sugar. And so your numbers are getting worse instead of better. And you're like, what is going on? Why is this happening? And then suddenly, all the time that this is going on and you've been faithful to keep low carb and to do the intermittent fasting, you're burning off fat from your liver. You're burning out the sugar that's been converted into fat and it's being reconverted into sugar uh, from your liver to the point where finally the liver gets clear enough and it starts to regain some of its previous lean and mean and uh, machine type properties. And suddenly, boom, the bottom falls out and you go to normal are close to normal. So this lady is like, I'm waking up with 160, 170, 180 all the time, all the time, even though my regular numbers are pretty decent, but boy, they're not good at all when I wake up. And then suddenly she's like, oh, now it's 100 when I wake up. What has happened? Well, I like I said, I can't declare definitively for her, but I think in some cases, probably in many cases, it's a liver issue. And suddenly the liver gets healed to the point where it starts working the way it's supposed to again. And uh, the, uh, the dawn phenomenon is no longer a big issue. Uh, you're not supposed to have a dawn phenomenon that's going to be just way above what your normal baseline glucose level is. Yeah, it might be a few points higher, but it's not supposed to be that much higher. If you're having like normally throughout the day 110s, but you wake up with 180, uh, something's wrong there. But she was persistent, and that's the key I want to leave you with today. As this uh, 2022 challenge, this six-month challenge comes to a close at the end of this month. We're just days away. I want to leave you with this. She persisted. How long do you have to persist? There's no answer to that. For some people, three months could do it. Some it could take six. Some it could take a year. Some it could take a year and a half. But uh, I really believe that we can all beat the dawn phenomenon if we've still got a pancreas that's working. 
So congratulations to this lady that has seen such a phenomenal victory with the Dawn Phenomenon. And let me give you an encouragement that you too can see a tremendous victory in this issue of the exponential curve. It's like a reverse curve where suddenly the bottom falls out, your liver gets clean, and bam, you're no longer seeing those really high morning numbers or fasting numbers. So be encouraged, my friend, and continue on with what you know you need to do. I want to announce an exciting new format that will be added to my Bible teaching channel, which goes by my name, Dennis Pollock. Most of my uploads have been on Mondays, where I post videos that I call Video Devos. These are short talks that focus on one particular Bible topic. And I'll continue to post these Video Devos on Mondays, but now I'm adding a new type of video that will be posted on Thursdays. These will involve Bible studies that Benedict and I will do at our dining room table. We'll be going through various books or sections of the Bible in a relatively short, easy-to-digest, user-friendly format. So catch the video devos on Mondays and the Bible studies with Ben and me on Thursdays. I believe you'll be blessed.